Born and raised um, in Baltimore City, um, Church Home Hospital, and that was down on Broadway and on Fad Street. And I was raised on, um, at the time I was on Llewellyn Street in East Baltimore. Um, the truth is, I was, I was a, I was a good, I, I, I was a good little, I, I was a good guy. I'm a good little kid. I was, I was good. I was going to school, good grades. Um, then I got hit by a car, and I'm chasing the girls, you know, boys chasing the girls, and I got hit by a car, and um, I went to John Island Hospital, and um, then my life changed after that. I started doing bad things. My father was in my, my, my mother's life, then it, my father was in our life and everything, then, it, then my father left, and my mother started um, messing with this man, with, which I used to think was um, my father's friend. And she started messing with him, and um, we used to call him Uncle Mike. And um, I ain't want to be there no more. I ain't want to be around him no more. I ain't feel comfortable around him. And my mother rejected what I said then, and then I realized, you know what I mean? I had, I had a better idea on the street. And that's how I, that's how I started um, going back and forth in the institution. That's how my, that's how my, 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 my institution came about, just to get away from the house, get away from that, um, the, that, that man that, that sexually assaulted me. And, 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 and I ain't feel, and I told my mother, and, and I really, really, from that point on, I ain't feel comfortable with this shit again. I ain't take it again, you know, and, 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 um, from that point, I just started acting out, start street that went to the corner store, and breaking in houses and doing crazy stuff at the time. And um, in and out of the institution, in and out of the juvenile institution, juvenile. When I went to institution, I feel love. You know, everybody knew me. Everybody called me. Then I started getting called fat cat, and I thought I was somebody important. You know, and and this way, I remember I told a girl one time, I feel more comfortable in the joint than I do out on the street. And um, that's how that's how it happened. And then I I start um I was smoking marijuana now and then. And, uh, never had a drinking problem, but. At the age of 29, I was drinking rum and tossing beer. And then I start one night, I start vomiting in big chunks of whatever it was. And it felt like my inside was coming out. And I said, well, I got to stop this. And I met this girl named Joanne. And um, she turned me on to um, her rum. She said, this will make you do it real, real good. And I was like, oh, yeah, all right. And I did. I thought I performed the best in my life. You know what I mean? And I, that was the best I ever had. And I started using, that's when I, at the age of 29, I started using her one. And um, I got her habit to take care of my head. They, they had 30s back then, you know what I mean? And um, that's what I was doing. I was going out to get it, do all means necessary, you know what I mean? To bring it home to her and bring it home to myself. Because I had a habit, you know what I mean? It came to it, it became a habit because it was more for me. And I needed it. If I didn't have my back hurt, I couldn't walk, you know what I mean? So I had to, um, had to have it. And um, that's how my drug had, had that's how my um, her one drug had to start. I found out in 1993 that I was HIV positive. Was that after prison? That was it while I was in prison, matter of okay. fact. I was in prison at the time when I found out I was HIV positive, and um, 
I took it hard at the time, but I knew, I didn't know some things about it. Like I said, it hit my family hard. You know, I got two brothers and two sisters that died at eight that, um, that passed away. And, and I just say won't put no more burden on my mother, even though I still love her regardless of, you know, I got older and older and I, I got past that. Then I came home in 2001 and uh, that's when I met my doctor, uh, my doctor about jocks. At, at the time, he was at Ebony Jordan, and uh, he believed in me. He, he he really showed me that love. He really showed me uh, that I can I can live off of it, and he uh, kept me on the same thing. Commerville and Palmer. Dr. Derek Spencer was the best best friend, best doctor, best everything. Then he brought me over over jocks with him. I remember he said, I'm leaving, I'm going over jocks. And he brought me over here. And once I got the jocks, it was it, it was even better. You know what I mean? It was like a lot of love, a lot of care. And then it just got bigger and bigger because it was, I remember it was just him and his, his nurse. And that's about all for real. But now uh, jocks and I'm, they're just staying. You know, he got, he got some real good doctors with him. And, uh, He's still my doctor today, and uh, I want no other doctor but him. I volunteer uh, on, on on Tuesdays and Fridays. I go over to the hospital, um, visit uh, patients um, that's of HIV or uh, AIDS or whatever. Uh, but mainly HIV and AIDS, and uh, see what kind of help they want. Um, I do that. I do that. I I've been doing it for like a month now, going back and forth. For um, I used to go um, m Monday, Tuesdays, and, and Fridays. But um, then I started volunteering at Movable Feast, and um, I volunteer at Movable Feast on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And um, that's what I do. I go down there and we feed them. We feast. We feed. Uh, we make trays and feed people for um, HIV, cancer, homeless, um, recovery houses, and the f the food is being repaired pretty good. It's a very clean place, and I'm very impressed with it. And I like uh, I like I like every, all the volunteers very well respected, and it's just a fun place to go, you know. And um, and I'm doing it like. Just to get um, just to get my work ethics back, you know, instead of punching in, sign a paper that when you come in, put your card on, put your uniform on, and it showed me how to be responsible and show me how to get ready for a job again because I ain't have a job in so long, and I'm not using. I'm, I'm going to meetings, I'm doing positive things. You know, I'm in a recovery house. I just want to live like everybody else does. You know, I'm going to give myself a chance. So I know some things going on. I know there's going to be some storm coming. Oh, but you know what I mean? I just won't kill me. I just got to go through. I just got to learn and go through some things. You know what I mean? I want my identity back. I don't want Fat Cat no more. I want my identity. I want Gary. I want my name back. I don't want Gary. I don't want Fat Cat no more. I really, really, really don't want to be a Fat Cat. I want to be a carrier. I want, I want my name, and I want to, I want to start living up to my name and do some positive things. So he's like, yeah, hey, come on, Gary, Gary, what you know me? Or, do you know Gary, Gary? You know what I mean? Some positive things to the negative things, you know? That's a big major change for me. I got to pat myself on my back for that for doing so good, you know what I mean? I'm so proud of myself, you know, for a change, you know?